Good night, everybody. Welcome again to our m and series. You know, I just want to welcome everyone that is within hearing of my voice. And special greetings for those online, YouTube, and Zoom. Praise God. Tonight, we are once again indulging our m and series. Uh, we started about three, four months ago. Our first series was The Man and His Money. Then we looked at The Man and His Mission. Last month, we look at the man and his mental health. Tonight, we'll be looking at the man and his marriage. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, we have been having a wonderful time over these past couple of months. And I believe tonight will be the same. So wherever you are at this time, I'm just going to ask you to just give us a listening here tonight. You know, if you are in your bedroom or uh, wherever, watching television, I just ask that you, you know, just incline your ear to what we have to say to you tonight. You might just find it, you know, helpful, you know, in your marriage for those of us who are planning to get married. Amen? Praise God. At this time, I'm going to call in our pastor, <laughs> and he's going to come, and he's going to bring greetings to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so good to be a child of God. It's so good to be out in the open air to discuss some serious matters. Amen. Bless the Lord. As my brother said earlier, we have started the M&M series several months ago, and we have looked at several interesting topics. And tonight will be no different. Tonight will be one of the very very important topic to discuss. I believe every man want to discuss this topic and every woman want to ensure man know about this particular topic. Tonight we'll be talking about the man and his marriage. Amen? And man and woman, men and women view marriage different because we have different love language and also we have different, we look for different things in the marriage. You know a man look for respect a woman wants to know that she's loved. Amen. Am I right or am I right? A woman wants to know that she's loved. And a man wants to know that he is respected. Yes? And also, the other important thing in every marriage is S-E-X. Children are here. Who can spell? Who can spell? Cock in the ears. Amen. I want to talk about some important things that men want to talk about, right? If you talk to a woman, most time you talk to the wife, sex will be like perhaps the, if it's an item one to ten, sex will be like probably number nine. For, for many women, generally. But for most men, sex will be like number two. So there's respect, then sex, and then everything else. How my sound so far? Yes, man. And that's why we need to talk about these things and many other things. So tonight is going to be a very interesting night. Our speaker is already here. She's a world-renowned speaker. She's well-known and she's very prolific. She's someone who knows how to dissect the world. She's someone who, she's a great orator. She knows how to speak and make things very simple. And she knows how to keep you captivated and interested of getting this. Yeah, man. Amen. So tonight, I want you to be attuned. I want you to listen carefully. And I want you to ask your questions. Ask your questions, man. Ask any question you have. Because I plan to ask my questions in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for being out with us. Everyone in the reach of my voice, I'll invite you to come closer so you can ask your questions. Bless the Lord. Greetings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. At this time, we are going to have our scripture reading being read. And it is going to be taken from Ephesians chapter 5. If you have the Bible, you can turn with me. From verses 22 to 27. 
Ephesians chapter 5, 22 to 27. I'm going to read from the NIV version. Praise God. I begin. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submit to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband in everything. Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, with that said, the only thing left to do is just to invite the presence of the Lord in our midst tonight. Praise God. You know, the scripture reading just laid out straight for us. You know, just as how Christ loved the church, he said that, you know, the husband should love his wife and the wife should submit to her own husband. At this time, we are all going to pray. So I'm going to ask us to bow our heads while we pray our opening prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Oh God, we thank you for you know, your presence. We thank you for this moment, Lord, that you have given us. Oh God, to speak in such a fashion as this. Oh God, you have given us the key, Lord God, and you have given us Oh God, a mandate, oh God, to teach and to preach. And tonight, we are obeying your words. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, that as we will come to the community, Lord God, that you will be with us. I pray, Lord God, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in your sight. And those who are within hearing of our words, Oh God, that they will submit, Lord God, and they will come to you knowing that you are a life savior. You, God, are what they need. Some of us, we feel that we need a better house to live in. Some of us, we might feel that we need a car. But praise God, we know, Lord God, that with you in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. So right now, I pray, Lord God, that your spirit will come by here as we seek to draw closer to you. Let your will be done. As we continue to look to you by faith, in your holy precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, as our pastor said that, you know, we have a prolific, world-renowned speaker with us tonight. And, she, you know, she'll be delivering our words. And before she comes, I just want to read a little profile of our speaker. So this is profile of Bishop Dr. Carla A. Dunbar, JP. Carla A. Dunbar, a Kingstonian by birth, immigrated to the parish of Portland at age 11, where she got married and later accepted the Lord on the 20th of February, 1994. She subsequently served the Church of God of Prophecy for 21 years as senior pastor and national family life director. She now serves as founding bishop of Life Temple Ministry International, located at Temple Hall, St. Andrew. She's happily married to Mr. Canute Dunbar, a union who shall produce four children, two girls and two boys. The couple now celebrate 44 years together and posterity of 10 beautiful grandchildren. Bishop Dr. Carla Dunbar holds a BA in theology, a Master's of Art in Counseling Psychology, a PhD in Marriage and Family Therapy, and is a licensed sex therapist. She is also a certified professional life coach and media consultant. Her name has gained national popularity and she has addressed audiences in the private and public sector of Jamaica. 
to include all major government, corporate, religious, and educational organizations and institutions. Her reputation has gained her international recognition. Subsequently, she has represented the Caribbean during the 2016 Caribbean American Legislation Week and the 46th Congressional Black Caucus to speak respectively at the White House and U.S. Department of State in Washington, D.C., and was also the keynote speaker at the third annual U.S. Faith-Based Summit hosted at Howard University. Bishop Dunbar was conferred an honorary doctor of philosophy in the Human Letters and awarded fellow of the most excellent order of international expert in the field of marriage and family counseling in 2018. She further received the prestigious award for ecumenical leadership civic engagement, and marriage family unification in the Caribbean, UK, and the US during the 48th staging of the Congressional Black Caucus in Washington, DC, where she addressed the caucus on sexual repression and, church res and the church's response. She is the director of Carla Dunbar Ministry International and principal director of the Grow Your Marriage Academy and Ministry and Counseling Care with offices in Kingston, Mandeville, Montego Bay, and Osharis. Her counseling service is further extended to the Caribbean diaspora via online platform. She serves the country as a justice of the peace in the parish of St. Andrew and is also the co-chair for the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Consultative Committee for Domestic Violence. Bishop Dr. Carla Dunbar is the author of three books, 52 Weeks Couple Devotional, Sexcription, A Prescription for Sex and Change, The Journey. Her passion for marriage and family continues to propel her to fulfill her mantra of rebuilding Jamaica one marriage at a time. She loves the Lord passionately and humbly enjoy helping person resolve life issue. Her philosophy states anyone can create an impression, but not anyone can create an impact. She seeks always to impact by empowering. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Bishop Dr. Carla Dunbar, JP. Let us give her a round of applause. Take up the whole of my time. <laughs> Pastor would tell you what I wanted to start with as my intro. But I can't say it here. <laughs> it's good to be here with you tonight. And I hear ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna like Christian Wolpa man, you know. Me did have only for imagination because you know. Yeah, you know, when I hear about men, you know, I yell them say my skin catch a fire. Yeah, um, so yeah, I would have loved to. But I'm hoping that there are some men behind the walls and the houses and so that we can talk to tonight. I want to greet Pastor Damien and First Lady Walker. It's good to be here back under your leadership because I've been here before prior to now um, under another leadership. But it's good to be down here under this leadership tonight. And the children... On the door, we are going to school. Holy part things, nobody start tell me. Now I'm going to finish the night. But it's good to be here. I am really privileged to be here this evening to, 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 to talk on the topic. And, I, and I'm trusting that the men who will be here and hearing, you will be able to translate to the other men, right, who are not here. So I think the topic was the man and his marriage. And I'm going to look at that in, by looking at biblical manhood you know, what God has to say about that. I'm more excited. When I was driving home, my husband said, Carla, I mean, I think I can do this tonight, you know. <laughs> Meaning that I have another speaking engagement that I'm supposed to do at, start at 8.30. 
right? And he was saying, I don't think you can do that, you know, um, but I'll see what God has in store. As you heard, we have been together for from Wapikil, Philip and Salf, I don't know what that means. But it's so nice, and we say it all the time. Um, we are celebrating a number of years together, as you'd have heard. I mean, no, I'm not look like the age of them, the number of them call. But, you know, I'm glad to be able to celebrate our time together. We just celebrated another year together. First, a heathen man, yeah, man of the street, Gallus Extraordinaire, and, you know, typical husband. And uh, now, today, I can proudly proclaim him as my kingdom husband. Yeah, yes, and he serves as elder of our ministry. So he's my claim to fame, by the way. Tell people that all the time, you know? Now, um, so I want to talk about the kingdom man. And I, I mean, I see my pen all right, I see my pen work it. Um, as I said, I want to talk about the biblical manhood, and I want to look at it under three headings. Um, the man as the leader, the man as the protector, and the man as the provider. Not necessarily in that order, right? Um, because the truth is that we have heard it was said that Jamaican men don't make very good lovers. Men no, 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 say amen to that, right? But a man, amen, no, for tonight, right? But they don't make very good lovers either of their wives or their children. Now, while I believe that this is credited to a larger extent by socialization, and it's a notion that holds some truth due to the culture. Um, I do believe that we have men who are very good lovers of their family. I mean, I talk about sex, you know. I was coming in and I was parking, and I was here, Pastor Damien talking about sex, and I said, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> not with all these minors, <laughs> right? But yeah, you know, that's for one different time. But yeah, our culture... I don't, I, I think, I think our men have been given a basket for care of water, my grandmother would say, in a lot of senses, right? Um, I don't, I don't believe that our men in our culture know which tune to dance, because so there are so many different tunes being played as to what makes a man a man, and you know, and all of those kind of things, but nobody's showing that. And so good men are posited to have strength and uh, tall, like the man who walk up the street a while ago, they saw and have biceps and triceps kicking and muscles flexing and all of these things. That, that, that them say a good man, right? So if that were the case, by the way, my husband disqualified because <laughs> he only have a one pack. <laughs> no six pack around here. Right? He had one though, I must tell you. I'm, I'm partially responsible for the fact that he only has a one pack. But no pastor look like same as six pack, you know. And I go on up with himself and so. Yeah, four you have. Well, my husband have one. You understand? It's my shock absorber. When I drop into a pothole, I don't feel it. Because he cushions me, right? But I truly believe that our men in general suffer from what can be called cultural confusion. I think it's a cultural confusion because the gender socialization of our culture in Jamaica is what has created the monster of a problem that we have in our homes where we have typically men who, who women cannot relate to or who they can't relate to women. Because when a man is growing up, or a boy, I hope these little boys are not hearing that. If you cry, yeah, ball fall. Yeah, girl. You know? And if you talk because you want to express yourself, they hear you say, yeah, sissy. So you grow up thinking that you're not supposed to talk as men. You're not supposed to express yourself. And uh, that has allowed for men to grow up being a silent type. So they don't talk much, they don't express themselves much, right? And so I believe that some of our men have grown up with that understanding that to be silent is to be more macho, right? It's the wrong understanding, right? And so we now have men who have become husbands who believe that less is more in the spoken word. And that is to the utter frustration of us wives because we talk enough. We bilingual, we trilingual, right? We talk a whole and we want man to talk, but man not talk, right? So what I'm gonna try to do is to kind of unravel what I consider to be of necessity tonight so that the men who are listening from afar and around will be a bit clearer as to God's idea, not Carla Dunbar's idea, because I have none, not Pastor Damien's idea, but God's idea of who a husband is supposed to be. 
right, or even a man is supposed to be, because I believe that most men, if not all men, want to eventually have a wife and settle down, you know, or, you know, have them partner and settle down. So the first thing I want to look at is the man, the leader man. The leader man. Now I know you heard my bio being read, and you heard that I'm the bishop and rete and whatever, whatever, whatever. Right? So our ministry is held on the lawns. Right? And it's just a hedge that separates the house from where the ministry is held. Right? And uh, so I am the bishop of a church. But just when we cross the edge and go over my yard, I am Mrs. Dunbar. My husband is the priest. Me take off the bishopric, right at the right so, and leave it. You understand? Because I am not supposed to be the priest. A queen can never be a king. Ever. It no matter what we try, it cannot happen. Right? So the king who was created in the class of kings to rule is the man. I believe that with all my heart. I am not a feminist. I believe it's a man for rule. Man for run things. Man not for run round things. Man is a man. Man is not a money queen. You understand? That is my personal belief. So I believe that is what it is, right? So a man is really is, is, is created in the class of kings to rule. And uh, who he is and who he is to be and the responsibility that God has called a man to. You understand? For this understanding to be penetrative or to be of penetrative worth, it must be clear. So we need to understand that it is from the male that the female comes it no matter how we take it. It is from the male that the female come. God, I, I like to believe, and the ladies here, you must agree with me, right? That God created man, but he fashioned females. So we're a little bit more feline, a little bit more softer, a little bit more gentle. I know you have some, what do you call them? Some man royal woman, you know. You understand? I am not one of them, right? Me gentle. Right? So, yeah. So, God create man. That's on the looks on a shoulder, 17 shoulder. And you have biceps and triceps and foot calf. And them something they will stand out. Right? Um, we are different. Right? We are feline and curvaceous. Not true, no, my sister? Yeah, we, we, we like to boast our 22, 44, you know, 22, 28, 46 kind of thing. That's our vital statistics. Right? And so, and we love tenderness and say, see, like our pastor find a cheerful lady melody, right? Because you understand? Um, in, in, in probably wouldn't do that for a man. Man, go get your own chair. Right. That is right, which is right, right? <laughs> but, but that is what it is. God, God, God created male and he fashioned female. And so it is important to understand the distinctiveness of the preparation of what we call the Homo sapien man. You understand me? No one never like hear that word. And that's a probably wrong word for call about the place. Or so. But Adam himself <laughs> was the first born man. And Adam was created a complete man. Adam was not created a little boy like these little boys and allowed to grow up. When Adam make him done make, him fully make, standing on all three feet and everything. You understand? <laughs> all other men, however, have to become men. You understand? But Adam was made a man. Right? God created him like that. Right? But the intention of God was that all men be of kingdom representation. All men must, must represent God in the fullness of who he is. Man to be man. You know my opinion. Because we want a good man. Yeah, we want a man to represent. You understand? Not just flex your muscle and not no back of it. We want everything. You understand? So if you are coming, you have to come full and powerful. Right? Yeah. Because that's what we want. That was God's intention. The Bible said that God created man in his what? Own image. Right? And his own likeness. Now, when you examine that, we know him talk about will, mind, and intellect and stuff. Because we know that God not have no physical features. But he made you to be able to have that. And that was supposed to distinguish you from us, the fear of sex. You understand? So there was a distinct difference. Where that is concerned. So the intellect, the mind, the emotion, the ability for leadership to lead us 
you're in a particular direction. That is what God deposited in man. A sense of responsibility, the sense of manhood, not just maleness, but manhood. Because there's a difference between manhood and maleness. And I don't think we're, that, that, that's one of the things we're not understanding. Right? So God deposited into man a sense of manhood and he created man for dominion, for a purpose, for rulership, right? And governance. And so a real man knows where he's going and, and is able to, to, to lead persons and carry them along with him. We want to follow you because you know shall you go. Because blind can't lead blindness, somebody are going to lose. Right? So we want real man. Right? We want man who understands how to Lyrics, we? Yeah. You have a check, Salaman, you know. Right? Man, we know of the lyrics, we, and get us on board with them, going after whatever goals they have, and show it to us clearly so that we can see it, so that we don't feel like we are fumble when we about life. You understand? Because I, that I said there's a distinction between man and maleness. You understand? Because I know Sir Adam fall, right? Right? Real man know where I go. I know Adam fall and everything like that. Right? But I believe that there's a sense in which as wise we are being forced to wear the pants. I mean, I talk about the pants here. Because this pants is clearly a female pants. Right? Because female pants are different from man pants. Right? But you know, forced, you know, so I think there's a sense in which we feel forced to, to, to wear the pants, to become leaders in our home. Um, you know, when that is not God's ideal. You understand? So, we have to do something about it because guys who father a child outside of marriage are males, but you're not necessarily a man. Yeah? Guys who live with a woman, and you can live with a woman, and she meets all you need, but you're not a marry her, you're a male, but you're not a man. You understand? That's, how, that's how basically how me see it. Right? Guys who, you know, force your wife to set the direction for the family. You're a male, but you're not a man. Because I know we have to set the direction. You understand? You stretch way. It's a good thing, so we stretchable. My word goes so, I never know if my word goes so. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. It's a good thing, so we stretchable, man. Yeah? I'm a pastor, but as I say, I am my husband's bishop, but I don't lead in the home. My husband is the head of my home. Me not have no problem with, with my position, you know, me's a neck. My husband a head, me a neck. Me know he can't turn without me. It's important. So he need me. But me need him to see where me supposed to go, me there my direction. Me need him to hear from God, to tell me what God said. You understand? Me need him to speak and to speak authoritatively but lovingly so that me can feel the love when him I talk. I'm in a fearful. I may gravitate towards him, not singing just a closer walk it be, but I want to get close to you. You understand? So we need to understand guys who believe in having multiple sex partners and refusing to practice things like chivalry and breaking girls' hearts and say, you're a male, but you're not man. You're not a man. Because a real man not do them something there. You understand? I know that we have a, a kind of lack in rites of passage in our culture as to what really makes a man a man. We're kind of lacking. We have that, 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 that little void in our society. We try it, 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 God will go fix it. We don't worry ourselves about it. You understand? But leadership is the mark of a real man. Leadership, may I say that again, loud and proud. Leadership is the mark of a real man. We want men who will lead us. We don't have no problem if you are lead with and we can see that you are carrying us to. You understand? God gave man dominion over everything in earth, on earth, under the earth, and everything because God himself have dominion. You understand? And if man is made in the image and likeness of God, then we have dominion over with domain. That's why I say, man for run the house and for run around it. And for run it. Because man and man and man and a mannequin, mannequin in a store. Praise God. You understand what I mean? I say, <laughs> man there. <laughs> man there. <laughs> you understand? Uh, so we understand, you know, when Adam failed at his leadership role, Adam failed at his leadership role, 
And the Bible says, you know, Pastor Damon, as in Adam, all sinned and all died. And I believe what has happened is that there's a spiritual genetics handout. You understand? When Adam stepped back and gave Eve leadership, I think all men just automatically step back. Because if everything is done in Adam and through Adam, it happened. You understand? And this is why we have the problem where we say no. Where it seems like the women are more proactive and the men are very reactive and the women, you know, them, them aggressive and the man them passive. Me, me preach Sunday at church and me I preach about David and me tell him, say, me love my man them tough and tender. You have to have look at tough and look at tender. Me not want us so, so tender, but me not want us so, so tough neither. You have to have a good balance. Balance is important, especially in our lives. It's important to balance. You understand? So we want tough man, but we want tender man. So you have to have a little bit of tough, a composite of tough, and a composite of tender. So as in Adam, all sinned. And so the authority of men was usurped, and women took the lead. And God has used the availability of women. That's why women like myself have become pastors and so forth and so on. And in corporate organizations, women are CEOs. I did a study. On my first visit to the White House, I was asked to speak on the economic advancement of women and its impact on the family. And when I did my research, I realized that 60% of Caribbean women are CEOs. 60%. You know, that was quite alarming. What was even more alarming for me was to find out that because they have become CEOs and they are out there in the working world, this is where we see the influx of sexual abuse happening in the homes with their little children because they are no longer supervised by the nurturer who is supposed to be in the home. The nurturer gone out, gone look it. And so them something happened. That's why man have to lead man. You understand? Because we need to be protected. The law of physics is cause and effect for every action is an equal or greater reaction. So if that happened, we must have the reaction that we are having today. You understand? Because it was not truly meant for us to become providers in the sense that we have become that way. You understand? But I want to talk a little bit more about that. It wasn't meant for us to be the way that we are. You understand? Because it's not that we are supposed to be subordinate. Now that may I talk about. You understand? But we want to be able to look up our man them, whether them short or not. We want to can look up to them. It's not about how you hike. It's about how you carry as a man or how you act as a man or how you make we feel like a woman. So we want a man, real man. You understand? We want a man, man. We want a real man when we just have flex now, biceps and triceps and a profile and a pose like double six when you are really double black. <laughs> we want a real man. Women want real man. We want that thin line of balance to be struck between the two, right? We are not able to balance power and that are one of the problems because power has been given to us as women that was not supposed to be given to us like that. That is what happened when Adam stepped back, you know, and make even in a particular way was not thrust upon the woman. Like me tell you, I'm not sexist, you know. I'm not feminist. I'm sexy, but I'm not feminist. You understand? I'm not a feminist. I believe say, a woman is supposed to head the home. You understand? I am dying for the day when men regain their rightful place in society, in the church, in the home. You understand? Where we can finally have things one certain kind of way. I don't know if that happen. God did tell me, I, may, may I believe God. You understand? But that is what it is. God said it to go fix. And what, has, what is happening in the society is a reflection of what is happening in the home. It is, you know. It's a reflection of what is happening in the home. You understand? The family, what is, what is happening? It's a prototype of what is happening in the home. So, so, so we, we, have, we have to teach men how to rule and serve, Pastor. I have to teach man how to rule and serve. But we're failing at that too because government build more prison, more than bring social program for men. You understand? We'll probably social program for women. You understand? More prisoner build than social program. And we're going, and we're going to lose us to become winners. We are going to people who don't know nothing for advice. You understand? And so we're having a problem, right? And just as we, we are socializing church to do the, the results are going to remain with us. You have to take, when we know enough, if you drive a Audi, you can't get a Toyota for service. That's how you go. If you drive Toyota, you can't get a Suzuki for service. If you drive a Benz, you know, can't get a Nissan for service. So that's why we have to take back man to the manufacturer. And that is LLOM Global. 
That's God Almighty. You understand? Ladies, we, 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 we have a hard time. I try to fix the screw them. We go and rang in the man. The man something. We can't fix the figure. I never ask to fix. I got to fix it. We have to just, we have to just leave it. We got to make God fix it. Make God kick him bad out of your husband. Because if you try to take it out, it come back. But when him take it out, it remain out. You understand? So men are supposed to be leaders. Boys, men are supposed to be leaders. Not brutal leaders, not brute force leaders, but loving leaders. You know, when you're at school, they take care of the girls that are at school. You understand? Yeah. Why you, you smell? Don't you? You take care of them. You open the door for them. You pull out the chair for them. You don't do that. Eh? If them look like they must trade with them bag, because you know the book every year for them. Because men are supposed to be leaders. Yeah? Yeah, men are supposed to be leaders. You are supposed to grow up and be a God man. You understand? And, and, and when you're a God man, then you're a done man. Because it's what defines you as a done man. You understand? So you need to know that. So we're supposed to have leaders, men who are leaders. Right? And so you have to go back to God because God has a lifetime warranty on men. And statistics have proven, you know, that when men lead, even for the church, 94% of the time when a man is leading, even in Christendom, it's 94% of the time the woman, are, the whole family going to follow. If the man become a Christian first, the entire, the, 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 the statistics say 94% of the time, if the man first accept the Lord, the whole family follow. But listen to the disparity. If it is the woman who first accept the Lord, 17% of the time the entire family follows. 17, look on that vast disparity. 17%. That's why man have to lead, man have influence. Come like gone or the days when your ear say, wait until daddy come. That no mean nothing no more because daddy they've not come. Daddy MIA missing in action. Yeah. MIA, daddy missing in action. Daddy is nowhere to be found. And if him present, him not even emotionally available. Him just physically present. You understand? And that's wrong because we need men to lead us. We need men to direct us. We need men to tell us how to go about doing this or that. We need men to show us the, 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 the goal that they're reaching toward. That's why we, we were supposed to come alongside men to help men to fulfill their God-given purpose. We never did supposed to catch carve out the purpose. Me believe, say, when God said, and, it, and God, not, God, not, God not do nothing secondary, it's not a second thought God had when he said um, that... It is not good for the man to be alone, and I'm going to make him a helpmate comparable to him. And a second thought God have. What God did was give Adam responsibility. Remember, God Adam was a complete man. So God gave Adam responsibility. So he's supposed to look about the lizard and the iguana and the whatever animal they did, the chimpanzee and whatever they did about the place at the time. Right? And he's supposed to plant and so forth and so on. And I believe that, you know, you know, after Adam proved that he, had, he was responsible, he named the animal, him, him take care of the things, him, him plant the things, him, and him do all of that. And God said, yeah, Adam responsible. You understand? Yeah, a man. So I'm going to make him a woman. I'm going to give him a woman. You understand? That him can talk to a night time, because when the elephant attack to the elephant, and the giraffe attack to the giraffe, and, 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 and the lizard, them a couple up, and so. Man never have nobody to talk to. So God said, I'm going to make Give man a woman. So that man so he can couple up to. So he can have conversations. You understand? And, and God did that. It was not a second thought. God that had, it, had it, in, and it in mind all along. But Adam needed to prove some responsibility. So he gave him things to do. And then he gave him the woman. You understand? Because you imagine say when Adam go out and shoot the deer, he must come home and skinny. Then he must cut up and roast it. Well, I don't know if they used to season things with them that day. I mean, probably that he season it, and then he must roast it, or bake it, or what, or fry it, or whatever. But when he him, when him get a partner now, when he go and him kill it, he can't just scared come and say, babes, start out the thing. You understand? And you know, true, we, we, we skill like that, ladies. You understand? He may only roast it, you know, we are excavate it, we are brown stew it, we are curry it, we are do everything with it. But it made life easier. Because the two are work together. The man had the film part for God to go slay the goat and then him come back and even cook it. That was God's intention. You understand? When the man go out there and him, him plant the field and the man go up and him hustle and him come back 
you know, something with a dead woman, like a warm meal, the woman for me, like a ginger tea for belch for gas and stuff. You know? And, and the children them are taken care of and them kind of things there. But 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 gone, that that, that coming like it was gone. Because now women have to be stepping out there and being the providers. Men don't have to step up. Which part of everyone they don't have to step up? You don't have to step up because you're not supposed to be leader and we want to look upon you. We want to look at where you are going and want to come alongside you. We want to run with you. Yeah? We want to walk with you. We want to lie down with you. We want to do everything with you. But most of the time, we can't find you. It's like a spirit. You disappear. <laughs> come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Pull out like a disappearing. So it's like a spirit man. You disappear. You are supposed to be a leader. And show the boys how to lead. How are your sons going to know what makes a man a man? Where you show him, say you have a dozen women, and that is what makes a man a man? No, no, that makes a man a man. And you soon come sit down in my chair and ask my office, keep standing. And I probably now can't help you. You understand? So that is not because <laughs> you want to know that can run out, you know. You must think, you must think, you make out a muta baruka foot, but a material, it's not done. It's going to run out. And I'm going to borrow a foot water material. It's going done. You understand? Women have the capacity, not the necessity. We're not done enough. But man can't done. Oh. So, may I say, men, step up to the plate and be the leaders that you are supposed to be. We want leaders. We want men who will show us the way. We want men who will speak up and speak out for us. We want men to have conversations with. We want men to share how our day went with. We want men to talk about our children with. We don't want to talk to ourselves. You understand? And then we have to have a bag of company because you're not listening to us, so we have to go get some more people to talk to. That's not what we want. We want to talk to you. Yeah? Me tell you, I have a man, you know, was a gallus. You understand? Yeah, out there. I bad up himself a road, but you know it pays to advertise if you have the goods and may have the goods them come back. But anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Yes? Elder of my life. Yeah? And giving God thanks. So men, you are supposed to be leader. That's biblical manhood. That's what God wants. God wants men who are leading. From before, you cannot lead from behind. You lead from before. You lead with love. You lead with compassion. You lead with gentleness. You lead with a sense of responsibility, understanding who you are and who you belong to. Whether or not you come to God or whether or not you believe that God make you, him make you, you're going to answer to him at some point in time. Because when God came calling in the garden of Eden, he never said, Eve, he said, Adam, where are you? God is going to come and ask me. By the way, God never can find someone who can no, no, turn in our side or something. But anyway, so the leader man. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out of here. The leader, man, yeah? Man a leader, man a leader, man a leader, man a leader. Yeah? Man a leader. I'm sure you have seen that in Pastor Damien down here. Man a real man. Of course. Man a real man. You understand? Then there is a provisional man. Man with a provide. Man with a get up out and bed. And go work. So that bills can be taken care of. So that children can be taken care of. So that Woman can get her Brazilian ear. <laughs> man forgot get up and go work. You understand? Man forgot work. Because God in his wisdom made yet another distinction between the male and the female, right? And so let me also set this premise that God never had, me say it already, God never had a second thought. When he made, when he said it was not good for the man to be alone. There was never an afterthought for God. Because God not have second thought and God not have afterthought. God had given man the responsibility. Now this responsibility was supposed to make you responsible. Eh? Like somebody say you're supposed to add a response to your ability and make it your responsibility. That's what it was supposed to be. You understand? So the male man matured into a man. Right, and this is what's supposed to happen. And the Bible talk about, you know, him said when Solomon said, when I was a um, Corinthian, when I was a man, I spoke like a, when I was a boy, I spoke like a boy. I understood like a boy, right? I acted like a boy. But when you become a man, 
yakia kanti na akla ya boaya 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 big man a big man you understand right boaya boaya big man a big man right so man think like man right and god said man was supposed to be responsible right and adam i would believe managed well what god gave him the responsibility over because he was created like i say as a king to rule he was created in the class of kings to rule so it was in so much that god now says the king man handling him responsibility well which comes first for those of you who are not yet married being a responsible person now rush go take up now woman yeah, be, and you know, you're not ready for that because women come with responsibility. You have heard it said that we are like ambulances. We want, 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 want. And it ain't no joke. Right? So, yeah, you have to be responsible first. A prerequisite before you can have a woman. You need to be responsible. You need to have a job. Yeah? You need to have a job. You need to have a profession. You need to do something. Whatever it is that it is in your influence to do, you're supposed to be doing something. Before you want a woman, because sex can't eat. Yeah? That can't go on the table in a pirate's dish. A food go on the table in a pirate's dish. You understand? So that is not the end all and be all as delicious as it is. Right? So it becomes no good for the man to have someone who he can relate to and share and so forth. Right? And so it is clear that women have the ability to distract men. Because here comes Eve, and then Paul says, that's why Paul makes marriage out to be a problematic plan B, right? So Eve come and she told Adam, you know, let us go and do this, and he followed her, and he did it. But one of the most explicit passages in the Bible gives uh, the outline for what man is supposed to do. Man is supposed to provide. And as in Ephesians 5, you see where man is commanded to love. You know, easy for man love, you know. Man is not a natural nurturer. So love not come easy to a man. Love is easier to a woman because a woman is a nurturer. A man is not a nurturer. That's why in Ephesians 5, God had to command the man to make sure say so you love your wife. Make sure you love her in a sacrificial way. Make sure you love her in a priestly way. Make sure you love her in a provisional way. Make sure you love her in a protective way. It was a make sure situation. It was a command to man to, to do all of these things. So one of those ways in which the man is supposed to love the woman, you hear my brother? I have to provide. You understand? Yeah. So you have to can provide for your woman. You can't want just want to take up a woman because we're on a butto. You understand? We, we, we have needs. So you're supposed to be, have the ability to provide for us. And you're supposed to ensure that it's, a, it's an ability, that it's something that you do with joy and pride. The fact that you know say you can you can go out and you can match up your thing and you can you can hone your hustle and whatever it is that you are doing and you are able to come home and, and provide for your family. Me tell men all the time it's not how much you earn. It's where you care home and put before where I give it to us and say, babes, that this my have. We know how to match that out and plot it and throw three pardon out of it and tie up. Me tell you, woman never broke yet. Oh, me shouldn't say that. Should not have said that. <laughs> no, you're going to have to know which part of things is there. You never want to know which part of things there. But that's true. If it is that you own your hustle and you do your thing and you come and you give us something, we know what to do with it. But you're supposed to can provide, man. You're not supposed to want a woman if you can't provide. You understand? We don't want bag juice every day. We want, yeah, we want carrot juice sometimes. And so, grandma, sour sap juice. And these things. You understand? Yeah. We want these things, man. We want to look good too. You understand? Yeah, because I know miserableness are wear. I could close are wear. So we want these things. But you have to be able to provide. You have to be able to own your hustle and get up, man, and go do something. You know, too many times I walk on the street side and it is it is disheartening to just see what I go on. But I know say I pay a good man down in that alley, yeah. Right? Don't get another look of quarters. We are whole for good man. Don't a man who are provide. A man who understands so a woman have needs. All the care about all out. Eh? Yes, yeah, so a woman have needs. And so you can't just take up a woman and, 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 and you know, um, like, 
you know, certain sex will say, take a woman and call her your wife, and that is the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story, because we are a problem. Yeah, women are very diverse. <laughs> you can't understand, you know? You can never figure it out, you know? You die trying, you know? You take nine months coming out and do all your life trying to get back in, you know? Oh, you'll never understand us because we're complex. We're supposed to provide you with intrigue for the whole of your life. So we're not normal because normal people can't provide you with intrigue for the rest of your life. I want after 43 years, I can give Mr. Dunbar any pick for the any day of the week and twice on Sunday. You understand? So we're supposed to provide you with intrigue, with high maintenance. Yeah, so you have to be responsible, you have to have a job, you have to own a hustle man, do something. Do something, do something, do something. You understand? Because you want to submit to you, and then we see you, and have to get up 6 o'clock and go work. Oh, 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 what we are submit to? What are we submitting to? What? You look good? Your good looks? Your clerks? What we are submit to? We want something to submit to, we want substance. We want some substance, some men you are supposed to, you're supposed to provide. You understand? We have quick wit and moral discernment and so as a woman that, yeah, we will submit, but we have to know to what, so you have to provide. You understand? Because God gives divine directives for the guidelines for what we submit to and how we submit. And it's all there, written in the word of God. You give sacrificial love to your wife, provide love. Let us provide food, provide love, provide emotional support. A wife can't talk to you. A more than one tongue we have in us, so we talk now. <laughs> you understand? So we want to be able to talk to you. We want to have conversation. By the way, conversation does for a woman what sex does for a man. Get that? Conversation does for a woman what sex does for a man. So you do the maths. You do the maths. Yeah, talk more. That's why Solomon was a lyricist. <laughs> Solomon didn't know what he was supposed to do. <laughs> Solomon never come in and shut up his mouth and grunt like pig when he asked, when, when he should have met him and said, so, so babe, Solomon, where you coming from? Him, him tell her the world, you nine years. He knows that she needs to talk. You understand? And even if he needs to build a little bit and recalibrate himself and, and so forth and so on, he now go in bed and give her some talk time. We need to talk. It's a need that we have. It's not a want. We need for talk. We need for express yourself. A study showed that I, a study that I read showed that a woman can speak fifty thousand words in a day. We're not normal. Fifty thousand words. Men only get half of that. Twenty-five thousand. And when a man go up and he work and he also him use up twenty four thousand nine hundred and seventy five and come on with twenty five. I think I can't serve and I try to serve. When I was a what me say nothing. And you don't talk. And when they there, I say, where is that story there? Like where you drive come from work, where you eat for lunch, who you sit today and stop. And where I wait for the rest of the story and the rest of the story now. Because you try to conserve for your 25 words and we have 25,000 words. We still need to use it before the night done. But if you are smart, you'll allow us to use it up because you say, if, if tomorrow ever come, 50,000 add to that we left. That is why we regurgitate so much. That's why we can't remember things for happen from three months down the road and bring it back and tell you when we have an argument. Because it pile up. No make it pile up, brother. Use it up. Make we use it up. You understand? And you want to tell us, look how long that person gone. It is still inside that way. You never make we let it out. I hear bad. We never talk about it. We have to talk about it. If we don't talk about it, it's not going away. It's not going to Girls talk more than men most of the time. Most of the time. Right? Not only is it cultural and a, and, 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 a, and a problem of gender socialization. I just saw God make we, we lingual. Eh? We have to tell la 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 la. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> it, it is just important. Yeah? So you want to provide emotional support for the woman. So it's not just food. You carry the money come or you carry the food come. And you dash it down. No, we want emotional support. You understand? It's supposed to give us that the Bible talks about purifying love. You, want, you don't want her to do nothing that is going to cause her to feel like you're defiling her. Or you're causing her to do anything that is going to cause her hurt. 
you know, either in our emotions or physically or otherwise. You understand? The purifying love is one of the things that you're supposed to provide for your wife and your children. You know, your little boys, they need to know that they are love. Your little girls, them daddy's little girl and these little things. You have to do that. So, not tempt with That's why the Bible tells the fathers, they not provoke your children to wrath. Listen, be there, man. Be very present. Don't let the pit them always see your back. Yeah? Said so you have to be there. The Bible said that love, if you love, you're going to do, do good for the other person, if you love the other person. Right? And it means that you, the Bible also tells them, as you have to love, if you seduce your wife. Right? Now, there's a term that you have forgotten and I've not used in quite a while. So, I want to even know if you do that. But that's our next showdown. Right? You have to know how to, it protects the marriage. You understand? You have to know how to be romantic as a man. Provide romance, man. We want that too. We want like a romance. You understand? If you can't just be business as usual. We want because caring love is another aspect of love that you're supposed to provide. The Bible talk about um, cherish. The word cherish. We grew up in the country. The word cherish denotes like a hen sitting on her egg and keeping it warm. We want to feel warm. That's what I tell my husband. I'm under, I'm under, I'm under I'm the odor and me ever under my arm. Yeah. Me am under arm the odor and we want to feel cared for. You understand? Like I said, we are a little bit more tender and softer and more feline. You know what me believe, Pastor Damien? If when God did put Adam under the anesthesia, when put him under, to perform the surgery, to take out Eve out of him. If when Adam did get up in him, see somebody look set just like him, 17 shoulder bicep up and try, he not drop back asleep, you know? <laughs> so God had to ensure that what he saw what that what was what, what was a sight for sore eyes, not the cause of sore eyes. A sight for sore eyes. You understand? Same that if you see somebody will look feeling and nice and you know? Yeah, curvaceous and all these things. You understand? Breast standing up like twin towers and legs look like all these wonderful things and these things and so forth and so on. You understand? Look good and so. You understand? So so you, you, you want to look good, you have to take care of our brother. Take care of us. You have to preserve the beauty. You understand? Preserve what you want. Preserve it. Because the time you take a run next door and a run over the fence because the grass look green up on the other side. You know, say a woman can cook 20 different, one meat in a 20 different way. Because we skill like that, we're good like that, we can serve you anything where you want. Anything. You don't need to go nowhere. You understand? We can serve you whatever you want. You don't need to go nowhere. You understand? You just need to stick with we, and you just need to love we, and you just need to show we say you love we, and we can serve you anything where you want. We can cook tin mackerel in a 100 different ways. We can cook sardine in a 20 different ways. We can do cook chicken or chicken. No mention chicken. We cook chicken in a 1,000 different ways. Yeah? Whatever you want, we can give you now. You have to care for us. You have to make we know say you care, man. You can't just go on so. You understand? You have to provide a secure environment for us. When your wife needs strength, your woman needs strength, give it to her, man. You know, so one girl one thing. When we need strength, give it to us. When we need encouragement, give it to us. You understand? Whatever we need, you are obligated as a God, man, to supply as best as you possibly can. Yeah, because God chose you as the man to provide. So you have to do it. You understand? To nourish and to cherish and to ensure that the children, that's why I'm saying, do it like how me do it for the church. He provides. So you have to provide too. You understand? I say we can't work. I want economy. We're in a no way. To a way of a bounce it out and so forth and so on. Right? But it can't be that you want favors. You want your wife to be there for you sexually and otherwise and so In the Bible, a woman's sexuality is like a gardener. If you have a gardener, you're going to take care of it. A weed, take it up. Holy power, we take it up. You have to take care of God. Now, God takes tending to produce its best fruits and plants. So, you can't want the garden to provide you with what you want the garden to provide you with. Garden for look good. And you're not putting no work in the garden. At thorns and thistles are going to juke you. So, you get born. Eh? For a garden to do its own, a proud. You have to work, man. It takes effort. You can't get a good garden overnight, neither. And so if you allow the garden of your wife's sexuality to, to run wild, you know where you're going to get. 
And when you get you have to go take. You understand? You not get nothing as a matter of fact. Not even look a catch and quint, not look a nothing, not look a picture frame, not look a nothing. Not look a roast duck, no nothing. Not look a escovitch, nothing, nothing. Mighty God, you need to buy one iBook here. You're all of them position in iBook here. Glory, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hey, mighty God. Yeah? Oh, glory. <laughs> you understand? You don't want to give up in this sphere, gentlemen. You want to make sure you say, I take care of the wife. You understand? Because if you want roast duck, you have to take care of the wife. You understand? If you want escovitch, nook, you have to take care of the wife. If you want catch and queen, you have to take care of the wife. If you want picture frame, you have to take care of the wife. We can't deliver all those deliverables unless we are taken care of. You understand? Good. For a garden to do its own, a proud, you have to take care of it. Yeah, you have to take care of it, right? And then there was unbreakable love that you're supposed to provide. Bible says for the husband to love his wife as Christ loved the church. He must love her with unbreakable love. That means to say, Christ never go adjoin himself to somebody else. It means faithfulness. It means being faithful, be practicing fidelity, man. Yeah? Be a, not, not wrong with a one burner, man. I heard um, this movie star, Maris Chestnut, being interviewed one time, and he was asked, what makes a good lover? And I love this response. He said, a good lover is a man who can be satisfied with one woman over a lifetime and a man who can satisfy one woman over a lifetime. Not no wrong with a one burner, man. One burner burn good. You know one burner burn good, man. Nothing wrong with that. You understand? So you don't have to have multiple burners. You understand? As a matter of fact, when I'm just one burner, I'll throw with that. With that good. Now the problem now is that we have six burners and all these things. You have to know, man, that your union with your wife is permanent. It is permanent. Right? When you, when you got married or whatever, you decided to leave and cleave, it's supposed to stay so. And so you and a woman want to rest in the security car. Every woman married for security. Every woman. They with you for security. But I think so with you because you look good. Because we are not aroused by what we see. You could have looked good till you drop down. We are not aroused by what we see. Women are not visually aroused. We are aroused by what, how you treat us. You are visually aroused. That's why you look at us and you are standing on all three feet. Because you are aroused by what you see and what you touch. We are not like that. No matter how you look, it's all you treat with that arouses us. It's not what, what, how you, what you look like. You understand? Because we never see that. You understand? You could have ugly like gorilla. If you treat with good, we're good. You could have, no, it's true. You have to treat with good. You understand? You don't have to have no education. I mean, that is good. You need to get all of that. But I'm just saying. Right? Just as the body of Christ is indivisible. That's how it's supposed to be. Right? And because your relationship with your spouse is a testament of Christ's love for the church. And we need a season for you to refocus, man, and recalibrate. Because men do not, men, women not cheat, you know, for sex, you know. Women cheat because they don't get taken care of. Women cheat because their emotions are out of work. Be you understand? That not, that those are the reasons why women will look outside them. A man won't talk to them. A man will listen to them. You understand? See a good man there. Eh? Pushing Kiata go down the road. <laughs> yeah, good man here, my brother. Go and push your Kiata. Yeah. yeah, one day I push down something bigger than that. You understand? Yeah. But we have to understand. Women have normal needs, right? And you often short circuit our responses. Too many times you just want to shoot straight to the gunner. My husband does say I want to look right down into the matter. Eh? You just want to come on to us and you're in a room, three, a, a, a room like Digicel and stop three places, breast, bottom, and vagina, like when I have belly and back and there, something. <laughs> <laughs> so, you need to be a provider. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, man, them and around, and around, and around. Three places stop. Like, I want to have sense in the man, them and. Like, just three places. Just stop three places. Breast. But then, pass the abdomen. Pass everything. Bottom. Vagina. That's all. Pass and go down with two and come up back, man. Something, something, something. Provide, provide, provide. Provide. That's what I'm talking about. The provisional man. So you have the leader man who leads from before, who guides us in a particular direction. Then you have the provisional man, provide. And then finally you have the protective man. 
And I think this a lot speaks to integrity. Right? Um, th there's a whole lot more that could be said tonight by the time. But we need to be protected. We need to feel safe. We need to feel safe. Right? And a man who seeks to make his family feel safe is a real man. Integrity is so lacking in our society now that it is not even funny. Right? But your spouse your wife, your children need to know that they can be secure in you. Secure in the knowledge that you are trustworthy. That what you say is what you mean. Yeah? That we can hang on to your word and know, say, you mean what you say. If you say you're going, you come back, you're going, you come back. Yeah? You're not lied to it. You're not trying to tie it like we're a goat because we're not a goat when I eat grass. You understand? But you are being truthful to us. And we can trust you. Your character stands. Your integrity stands. Yeah? Father, I want to know if you tell your children so you're going to do something and not do it. Me, me, I come check your man. You may come look for you. I go buy this here. You know you're not do it. And you give the children them false promises. Children are not impressed with hypocrisy. And that is hypocrisy. You understand? I believe that. You say if me when my children and my grow up, if I promise them I'm beaten, yes, they bless my days most of them I get it. You mean I tell us I'm gonna beat you, I get it. You get it. Just like if my promise is something good, you're gonna get it too. You understand? Children are not impressed with hypocrisy. Don't girls? You want when daddy tell us, say, they might go and come back, they might come back, don't. And they might buy you something, they might buy you something. Tell them for top tell life. <laughs> Your father do it. Good father you have. Big him up tonight when you go over and tell him. Say, Daddy, I love you. Yeah. You understand, man, if you stand up to them word. Because if you cannot be counted on men, then you can have little positive impact in our lives. Your word must be good. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. You understand? You will not be trusted with greater responsibility. Me not gonna trust you. Everything, everything you tell me, it not work out. If you tell me, say, yeah, come home, 8 o'clock or 2 o'clock tomorrow, man, me not see you. We can't trust you. Can't trust you. We want to trust you. Kingdom man keeps promises. God keeps promises. Kingdom man keeps promises. You understand? Kingdom man follow through. No make promises to a woman and your wife and your children. And you have to love them and to honor them and to cherish them. And then you know follow through. Remember, me said God I go come call him. And he not call Eve. Not call Eve. Why? Because we're supposed to follow the leader, 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 follow the leader. You understand? So we want men who are upfront and honest with us. Because when we continue to get disappointment, we get frustrated. It runs deep. Disappointment runs deep into the heart of a child. It runs deep into the heart of a woman. We don't want to consistently get disappointment. You say you're going to do it or you're not do it. Yeah? The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, verses 7, husband, live with your paraphrasing. Live with your wife in an understanding way according to your knowledge of her. Treat her like a weaker vessel. You know, like your grandmother fine china. Porcelain. Yeah, a porcelain. We are porcelain. So I'm saying, treat with gentlemen. Be protective of us. Knowing that we're breakable, we're like eggs. We're very emotional. Women run an emotion like America run pan Dunkin' Donuts. Our emotion we run pan. We're full of feelings. We're all up in our feelings all the time. But right now it's like we have to adjust for the feelings. Something come and then take it over. And all up in them feelings when man is supposed to be about logic and, and facts. You understand? And reason and them something there. It's like we are run just uh, for, for feeling. You understand? We are made a bag of emotion. We are made a bag of emotion, you know. I tell husbands all when they come to me and say, you see, now your wife brain, come like when you got some community members. See, another community I talk about, you know, one next time I go, right? A woman's brain is like a community where you go and them a tea flight and the way them just crisscross. A woman's emotions tangle up all over the place. You understand? We're a ball of emotion. You understand? And so, that's why we want to be able to trust you. You understand? We to make sound moral judgment and decision. Because when we make decisions in emotional imbalance, we don't make good decisions. Because it's because we are thrown off by the issues of life and things of life. You understand? So God said, according to your knowledge of her, 
treat her like the wood service is since you are here together in the grace of life so that when you pray God can hear you yeah so that when you pray God can hear you um see I'm not afraid to talk shame talk about myself and my husband Sunday evening we had a, a disagreement he didn't make a disagreement um, I gave him a, 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 he probably thought it was an instruction. I asked him to do something, but probably, I have a sternness in my voice. I'm a natural leader, right? And, or, uh, and, and so I said something, and he probably took offense to what I said, and it escalated the wrong way. He was really upset about it. I'm really saying upset because I just bill. I'm not afraid of him, you know. I just bill, yeah, I just bill and say, oh, that too shall pass. But he was really upset, really, really upset till, I sure I didn't nothing eat it. I go away and come back because I had to go on the road. I'm going to come back and I didn't eat. And I said to myself, say, what is this, Jesus? You know, so I go and watch two movies. I'm going to really watch movies after me. They can't tell me. I don't have time for that. But I don't want to get an argument. I just watch two movies and then I go into the bed when I know I'm asleep. And but you get up the man now. I get up now. I remember them something because that's me. I'm mature as a Christian. Get up and I'm making breakfast. And my husband come out and say, is me making breakfast? I'm going to look around now. Yeah, like, my body is not living in the house. I'm here and I'm one live. <laughs> <laughs> my husband said, I'm here and I breakfast, man. I said, but my bills are here and I'm alone live. And I don't really eat breakfast. I hardly eat breakfast, right? I don't know if I watch my good figure. But anyway, <laughs> joke me and I don't know if I watch nothing. But <laughs> he said, if it's me and I'm making breakfast, I don't want to. And I said, why? You know? And he and gone back one last night's story. And what other? And I said, babe, you know, if I offended you, I'm sorry. I never meant to offend you. But me I go get up and do my duties. This is one of my functional roles. Me I go get up and be making breakfast for you for 40 years. Where I think me I go stop now. You understand? And I say you are upset and there's a point where you are wrong and there's a point where I am wrong. Right? So if I've offended you, I'm sorry. I never meant to offend you. But there is your breakfast and there is your lunch. Because my husband now eat yes, the party for lunch. Me I give me meal. You understand? Me get up once I'm home. I've given him his meal to take to work, both his breakfast and his lunch. And I say, here is the breakfast and your lunch. And I say, and him still around. I say, baby, you have devotion this morning. I you know sometimes I put on my bishop voice. <laughs> 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 I say, baby, you have devotion. Because he, he has his devotion religiously. And I say, baby, you have a devotion this morning. Because you could have a devotion and still vex with me. You understand? Because I didn't say, you know, you're not what God said to you this morning. I say, baby, you could never. You know, I say, you're not, you're not have the devotion this morning. I didn't never really have no devotion because I'm still vexed. You understand? And me just, uh, you know, me just go in my room quietly. I just go in and I say, God, you don't need to start this out here now. This cannot happen. And me just pray quietly. Me have nothing to say. Me I pray. And by the time I get up and go to the kitchen, I take up him lunch and him breakfast. And I pack him bag. And I go to work. And I come back in the evening and I talk to me like nothing ever happened. And I just go like nothing ever happened either. You understand? You know, teeth and tongue must mean it. Go and meet and it after meet and after teeth and tongue meet. You make it up under the sheet. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You understand? Oh, my time stay, maybe. All right, good. So I'm saying, you have to live with your wife in an understanding way. You have to, and it involves mutual submission. And prior to commanding wives, God tell the man what to do. So we have to understand what to do. Be considerate, husbands. Be considerate. In your protective role, understand that it speaks to the sensitivity of your wife's deepest physical, emotional needs. Yeah, my husband, like I said, don't understand me fully, but he's not meant to understand me fully because we're supposed to provide him intrigue. So do it. Be considerate of your wife and your children, right? Talk to them, right? And remember, you have to love your wife like your own body because the Bible said, nobody, no man not eat him body. So you can't eat your spouse body either. Right? And be chivalrous. That is a lost art. And I hope these older men are teaching these young guys here how to open the doors and pull out the chair and all of those things. Yeah, do these things. Carry a bag. Nothing wrong with carrying a bag. You understand? It's, it's okay. Why have to carry a bag? You understand? You have to do it, supposed to. And be a companion, man. Be a companion. Treat your wife with, with respect, with love. Um, wives don't necessarily need respect, you know, we need love. When we feel love, we feel respected. When a man feels respected, he feels loved. You understand? Because man want, man need respect, women need love. Once we get love, once you love us and we know say you love us, yeah, we're good. You understand? So love your wife. Cultivate companionship and friendship. When we say cultivate, you know what cultivate means? Because God talking in an agricultural term. 
You understand? Dig up the style and plant two seed, man. Something. You understand? Cultivate companionship and friendship. You understand? That means sharing your life, sharing thoughts, sharing, you know, whatever. Cultivate that kind of a friendship. Not just, and for you, Christian men, not just praying and attending church. You understand? One of the secrets of a happy relationship is finding a commonality. I tell couples to create habits. Right? And move in your wife's direction. As I said earlier, we are more complex, we are more comprehensive, we are more internal. Right? So you need to know us. Marriage begins with a promise between a man and a woman or a man and his wife. And so husband, you have to get into your wife's hearts. If you get into her heart, you can't get between her legs anytime. Trust me. Read the manufacturer's manual. Yeah? She's telling me that I'm on to sleep in the other location in right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, read the manufacturer's manual, which is God's manual. Right? And, and, and know what is it that your wife needs. And know, understand that relationship is that it, it, it needs a compromise. So, pull in. I'm a pull in. Right? And there's much more, as I said, could be said about the intricacies of what is supposed to happen. But be the leader. Be the provider. Be the protector to your homes, to not just your wives, but to your wives and the children and those you have responsibility over and leadership over. Be the influence of God in our lives. And trust me, you'll have a happier life. Because they have a little saying, we say, happy life, happy wife, happy life. You understand? So if you want a happy life, you need to have make your wife happy. All right? God bless you. Thank you. I am finished coming and done. I am finished for this particular time because I, they are waiting on me to teach um, in another class. So God bless you and thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Bishop Dunbar. Um, I know we have listened and we have heard, but I'm wondering if there's anybody with any question. You can, I know she had to leave. So you can just come and ask a question. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know I didn't hear wrong in the middle of the conversation. You said that a husband should give the wife everything that they want. But I didn't hear you say the wife should give the husband. No, but you should say the wife should give the husband too. But you didn't say that. <laughs> no, you didn't. Let so tell the, the wife. Take the man. Tell the wife. Wives, give your husband, but That's listen, right. what they need. <laughs> but daddy, look upon this now. Are you supposed to give first if you lead by example? But I always give. You yeah, always give. Yeah, so how many can I always I get? <laughs> wife, give to the husband. Not yes. Look here. Let me tell you something. I have done now. You can't lock shop. Because when you lock shop, supermarket what might have a wider variety. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Thank you. Very Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, ask my question. Um, I think Brother Ramsey kind of alluded to it. I realize you spoke mostly to the men. I, right? that was what I, know, I know, I know, I know you spoke mostly because it's a men um, event. But um, what are some of the things you will say to a woman, you know, in regards to how she should treat um, her husband? And how would you um, address some of the myths? that men have with regards to marriage. Because sometimes, especially for young people who, who are not married yet, or, you know, um, person who, who just got married, there are some myths, you know, in marriage where they tell a boy, man can't go for two hours and three hours, and all them nonsense there. You know, you Which want to address right. some of these myths. Nonsense. Right? Yeah. All right. Um, it, it goes both ways, right? Um, it's not a reciprocated situation where you you are looking to get, because when you made the vows, you never made it with that intention. But marriage is supposed to be other-centered, not self-centered. So if you are giving to your spouse, and it's natural that you will be given to. So, um, you know, men have need for respect. 
one of their highest need is respect. Man have a need for a recreational partner. Your husband go play like a domino, you can go with the man and cheer him up and make sure he doesn't get six love. <laughs> you understand? Um, I mean, you don't have to like what your husband like, you know. You don't have to like what your husband like, you know. Me and my, hus me and my husband don't have the commonalities of liking the same recreational activities. But I appreciate what he likes. You understand? So be a recreational companion to your spouse, you know. Um, support them morally. It's like when I tell the man them so no want emotional support. Moral support is important. A man wants to be validated for what he does. He wants to be admired. You want compliment, he wants admiration. He wants affirmation. You know, when you go hear this and come back, you want the man to tell you say your ear look good, but when him go back and come back, you don't even look upon him. You have to affirm him. Yeah, if you tell him say he looks so and nice. And worse if the aftershave mix up with the clay sweat. Woo! Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise yeah. Jesus. You understand? And those, those, those things that Pastor alluded to are really made for true. I mean, I don't say I'm not going to do that still. I don't say because you understand, there are things. But I'm just saying, there, that's why premarital counseling is so important and postmarital follow-up. Because you see, you see a vehicle, a motor vehicle, like them regular care here, they need servicing. If you know what I'm going to have to service them, marriage needs service. That's why I opened the online academy. I have an academy online called the gym. The gym, G-Y-M, is to grow your marriage academy. I teach single persons how to make proper decisions about their lives and, and, and transitioning and how to accept self and how to serve God in singleness. I teach husbands by themselves how to love their wives and wives how to speak so your husband will listen a lot of the time. Husband can listen to your wives because... We mouth man, and we talk with this day, and we talk down to the men, them and all of those things, right? But we have to learn how to control ourselves so that God is pleased with our actions as well, right? And so I teach M&Ms, which is not chocolate, but just as sweet, marriage maintenance courses, right? Because you have to sustain your marriage. My husband and I didn't get to 40 odd years. We came through many dangerous trials and snares, like the, the hymns of glorious praise or the banner books say, right? Um, but we have made it because... We have, you know, collaborated together. So don't listen to everything with your ear. I know, uh, listen, the thing that they put on Google are people put them on there, you know. Don't make them detect, dictate your life. I'm not saying that there's not good information up there, but get information. Do who you take counsel from, it's important that you take counsel from somebody we know. You can't go to somebody with divorced divorce seven times to save a marriage. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying to you, don't pay attention to everything that you hear. Go to a, a, a source that has the, the right responses to give you. But at the toy you're supposed to work for your marriage work, one and cannot clap. It takes two all the time. Thank you very much, Dr. Dunbar. Um, don't leave. Uh, Brother Dwayne is coming to give a vote of thanks. All right, good night, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Carla Dunbar. Um, your presence tonight here was greatly appreciated. Um, we learned a lot, um, especially as, uh, as, as a man. I realized that I have to be, you know, a leader, and um, I have to take on the responsibility as a man to, you know, as it relates to the whole soul when my time comes, and <laughs> soon. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so tonight we just want, we, um, we appreciate you as a church family and we pray that God will just continue to bless you and, you know, be with you even on your, your, your um, next engagement and we just want to thank you and we just want to say we appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> All right, we are about to close now, but uh, no, we have to collect the offering. Uh, is there any ushers around? <laughs> Sister Odette, could you, the offering plate, could you go for my plate? <laughs> All right, don't leave with the offering. We are, have to collect an offering. God bless you. <laughs> Can sing a song in the meantime, you know. Yeah. How can I lay him down? How can I lay him down? 
It's so good to me. Sister Ramsey. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Oh, he picked me up and he turned me around. Plant my feet on higher ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Oh, God is good. Yes, he's good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Oh, he picked me up and he turned me around. Plant my feet on higher ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Bless the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord, praise God. At this time, I just want to formally close out our M&M series for tonight. I'm going to say the benediction. Let's all stand. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. It is time for the benediction. And now, may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. A night well spent. Praise God. Praise God.